So um, I guess, Marjorie, you're one of our teachers that teaches our Windows to the World class. It's a new yes. class that we're offering. Um, I guess, can you tell me a little bit about the class? I would love to. I have taught this class in person for quite a few years before I started teaching online. And I've been on several different online platforms over the few years. And um, we've just had a great time with it. And I'm very excited to bring it to my fun science. What the best thing, in my opinion, what, well, there's some good things about it, but I hated history in school. My husband is a history major and he knows everything. I didn't know anything. I didn't know when the Civil War was. I didn't know. I just was ignorant. I'd learned all the dates and facts and filled out sheets, but it had no meaning to me until I started really uh, understanding on an inner basis that these are real lives of real people who really lived through these things. Mm -hmm. And when I, I also didn't know a lot about missionaries and I started reading these books and fell in love with the stories and the courage and the personalities of the people who, who did this brave thing. I mean, we have a lot of missionaries, you know, in the States, this is focused on foreign missionaries and um, their stories are fascinating, but their stories are all set first in the, their country of origin and the culture and politics and history that's happening at that time. And they move to a different culture and a different history, different government system, different everything. And so whatever happened in history, wars, you know, personal things, culture, um, racism, any anything, they moved right into that. And whatever was happening in that country deeply affected their lives and their ministries and what God called them to do. And for me, it, it, in fact, it still is. Every time I read a new one, it is very exciting and it brings history to life and takes it out of that realm of, let's just memorize the facts and date and this period into what was really happening in life. And that's what interested me. I and what that. I find, yeah, what I find is um, some of the books are, they're all interesting. And the things I think, like there's one, a book about a woman we read, I had never heard of her, but it's so exciting. Even the boys get really engaged. And there's one about um, David Livingston that's very exciting. He had a very adventuresome life. And so it's very, the books, the content is very appealing. Some may be more to girls and some to boys, which is why uh, we all read probably the same two books and the students can pick from a select list of a third one that they're interested in. So I'd like them to have some personal choice there too. That's, that's great. And it gets them interested in, in researching or looking um, for different kinds of topics or history that interest them as well. Right. It's just, it's a very open way of learning. It's a very, it's a living, it's a living history even though we're, you know, 200 or however many hundred years later, or even 20, things have changed a lot. It's really, it's fascinating. And it could go on and on. I mean, there's stories being written right now about people and probably the most recent we do, we, we go past World War II. So there are some more current ones, even in the 60s, I would say, and maybe a couple in the 70s. One of the guys we read about is still alive. And we start way back in, in India in the early 17th century, I think. Okay. Okay. And so you offer two classes, Windows to the World One. Can you tell us like what countries you talk about in Windows to the World One? Yes, I might have to look that up, but we generally start with India. Okay, And we do India, uh, Myanmar, or Burma. And one of the books that's a choice book goes into Tibet, I think, or Nepal. I can't remember. Maybe both. But everybody won't read that book. And so if one student chooses that book and nobody else did, each student has a chance 
to teach the class nice. something about, so they've all heard something about it, or maybe, you know, a different region of India was their choice book because it's so wide open. And then we go to, I believe we go, the second part of the book is we go to South America because we do it, the course is not exactly chronological, but every, like, one follows a chronology, two follows a chronology. So we start with the earliest time. And I believe we go to um, South America after that. And then we may include one that year in Germany. I'd have to actually look at my list because I have four semesters okay. prepared. And sometimes I forget my dividing line. You're good. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And I love how, um, so they read and they do presentations and there, it sounds like it's really an interactive class where there's a it lot is. of, but a lot of different learning styles are captured um, through the curriculum and through the course of the semester. So I really like yeah, that. that. Yes, that is a thing we do. Um, so I will assign maybe, let's say if, uh, well, I have this it's not secret, but as I was reading, um, I started reading about this one organization in the first book, and then I would read about it, reading about the Boston Tea Party. I found out it was involved in that, and you read about it was had impact there, and they did some really sneaky things. It's very famous, but I, I didn't know about it, and so this theme carries through all the semesters so far, but one student might be assigned to talk about um, an uprising and teach the rest of the class. And another one might be assigned to talk about, um, well, the opium trade was really big in India and that relates back to Queen Victoria. So they might be assigned to give us a little information. I have students who are desperate Definitely afraid to talk on mic. Usually by the end of class, that's over. Okay, but they can start, you know, with two sentences. And I do not mandate cameras on. I have students who want their cameras on. Their parents want their cameras on. That's fine. I also have students whose parents say no video. And that is fine, too. I'd leave that to parental choice. So they don't have to come on camera. I hope they get where they'll come on mic and give us a couple of sentences because they have learned something that nobody else has. And we right. do something called one of my favorite things. I, I made this, I thought I made this up, um, called choose your own adventure. Mm -hmm. And every um, unit, I would say, we do a choose your own adventure. And I will give them a list of maybe 20 choices. And they, it, I tell them it should take you no more than an hour. This isn't supposed to take over your life. But at the right. same time, it should be more than 10 minutes. And let's say something we studied in one of the books or an event in one of the books or, you know, an uprising. I would like you to make a project about that, about an hour long, and you will present it in class. And I've had kids, wonderful kids, do things like a composer from that company will play a piece, folkloric dances, um, stop motion videos, um, Lego structures, artwork, incredible artwork that I tell them it should be something you enjoy and yet something you've learned. And so they get to display that in the manner that they choose. And I always let them choose their own as well if they run it through me. So that's always fun. And they're very proud of what they do. So we've had skits, we've had videos. Uh, they're amazing. These kids are amazing. That sounds, I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, I, I hope it sounds so. like, yeah, yeah. And you had talked about um, the books and at one point um, you mentioned that some of them are um, books with youth, um, youth with a mission. Yes. And I've read some of those books and they're fantastic biographies because they read more like fiction than they do um, dry biographies. They're really well written yes. books. And I, I, I like that. That's what they're using the material that they're using. They're wonderful books that, that is that our main course comes from them. I do offer in the extra reading 
some historical fiction set in that place or another biography. Like when we do Africa, a very popular book is Kisses for Katie. Um, mm -hmm. And that's one of the choices. So, but there's, there are some fiction books there that some people choose. Now about the reading, because, you know, kids are at all different reading levels. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cut anybody out because reading is a struggle. So an audio book is fine. A parent reading the book is fine, but parents do need to commit that the reading gets done. They've listened to the book somehow or something and that parents don't have to buy the books. Many of them are available on Kindle or check out of the library. So it should, it's not, a, the materials are not expensive. Many people like to buy them so they can have them, but they are, there's, I have found two books that I didn't really care for that were not poorly written, but I've read probably 50 and okay. they're generally just superior. Yeah, I've really enjoyed the the Youth with Permission books myself. Um, and as a parent, I enjoy reading them to my kids. So I'm glad yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, I guess, is there anything else um, for a student that might be looking at one of these classes as to, you know, what they can expect or? Um... I would say, how much homework do you have to do? Since okay. this is generally middle school. Um, I don't try to get a Carnegie credit and say you have to have so many hours. Although I have had high school students in the course. But what I would say is there's usually about three assignments per week, plus okay. the reading. And if it's a heavy reading week, I will take away an assignment. So I try very hard not to kill people with assignments and right. yet give them enough learning structure that there's something to do and something to report on. And I'll always work with a family with a kid with issues or something that's, we can work that out privately, but it's yeah. not, I try very hard that it not be too much and yet enough. Right. That's great. And I like that you're flexible and that you work with parents too. That makes it a nice compromise as well. So that's... Right, because really the parent is in charge, you know, and I'm just offering this. And I always tell the kids, your parent is the one in charge. So if your parent says, that Mrs. Mack is not making you do enough, I want you to write a 15 page paper. I say, then write that paper. And if your parent right. says, Mrs. Mack is telling you to do too much, then the parent can say, you don't have to do that. That's okay with me, because the parent really is the the final final say in the right. course. Right. I like that, that you work with parents. That's great. But okay. I guess I would say just thinking about, so the first semester we do, um, we start in India. I'm pretty sure we go ahead and move to South America and maybe to Germany. Okay. Second semester, we start in Africa and then we move to Arabia. And oh, the books are so amazing. <laughs> um, really, they're just that's that semester is wonderful. The third semester, it's completely China, and that's the one I've had. I think we we said before I've had kids, high school kids, who were adopted from China, who didn't really know a lot about their country, come take that course to okay. learn more about it, and they've had hearts for missions there. And the fourth semester is starts in the U.S. Well, it actually starts in England, moves to the U.S. with the, um, you know, the traveling preachers, and we mm -hmm. move on to the development of radio and then uh, missions flying. So it's really each each semester is really fascinating, and um, and there's more books we could just keep on going. That's that's great. I yeah. I love the the coordination between or the. Com com combination of the literature with the history and the hands-on projects. And I think it just makes history really come alive and all of us and makes it real. That's what people tell me. That's the biggest thing I say is, you know, my kid loves history now. I had no idea. And it's not, you know, it's not me. It's, it's the, it's the method really of, of doing just what you said, that combination brings, brings, makes it real. And right. interesting. It just, just happens. Yeah, that's great. That's great. 
well, I thank you for your time. And I, I would, I wish I was a middle schooler and I could sit in on your class. <laughs> well, thank you. I love it is fun. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. And I'm sure that um, the kids that are signing up um, next fall will be, you know, ready to, ready to participate. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to meet them. I really yeah. am. They, it's a, such a wonderful age. I love those middle school years. I really do. The kids are great. Yeah, they, they are. They are.